Well, here we are the day after the federal election. Um, very interesting. Joined by Andrew Enns, Executive Vice President with Leger. And first of all, Andrew, congratulations to, to you and your team on uh, accurately predicting the results of this election uh, nationally and, and here in BC, your polls were bang on. Yeah, we're really, really pleased. Obviously, uh, you know, we watch like everybody else with a with an eye in terms of who's going to come out ahead on this thing. But but in addition to that, we've got some numbers out there publicly that we're, you know, we're we're always very confident in our research. But at the same time, this is one of those times where you're uh, you're actually tested, uh, you know, tested on your work. I'll say and. Right. Uh, we're very, very pleased with our national numbers, in particular in British Columbia. We, um, you know, it's a, it was a, it was a bit of a, um, you know, uh, an up and down seesaw campaign in British Columbia, as we talked about that three way battle, and and yeah, we did, uh, we did do quite well. So appreciate the comments, Harold. Interesting. So uh, going going back a year ago, Premier uh, John Horgan here in BC used a pandemic election to turn a minority government into a majority. Justin Trudeau tried the same thing, didn't work for him this time. What was the difference? Well, a couple of things. I would say, first of all, the national landscape was a bit more competitive than I think what Mr. Horgan faced, um, you know, faced in in, Brit in British Columbia. The Liberal Party in BC was, you know, kind of uh, still sorting through some some leadership, uh, you know, getting getting comfortable there. So I think that that had, uh, you know, played a factor. I think the, uh, I think, you know, Premier Horgan did a better job of a um, framing the campaign early and moving off of the question of why an election now in sort of the midst of a pandemic. It was a lull in the pandemic in British Columbia. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, there was all kinds of, uh, you know, speculation about second waves at that time. But he he successfully got a good launch, a clean launch, and 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 really set the frame and the tone as to what was what British Columbians were 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 being asked to evaluate in the campaign. I think, you know, as we talked about in many of our other, uh, you know, sessions, uh, Harold, the, the prime minister really struggled and, and struggled till the end to really define the, the, the raison d'etre for this, uh, this campaign. I think thirdly, um, uh, you know, the, uh, um, uh, the, you know, the, the prime minister is still is six years as prime minister, and he, you know, it was wearing a bit of that baggage, and so there wasn't this, uh, this embrace of, of the prime minister. Uh, as there was with Mr. Horgan, who is only still only a couple years in as premier, still this still fairly fresh, and there was a notion that he, you know, would do all right with a majority. I think for some Canadians there were there was a uh, for some Canadians I think there was a sense that maybe you know there could have been a change of prime minister and they would have been okay with that. It was pretty flat nationally in terms of uh, looking at seat counts for the Liberals and the Tories and and frankly the NDP, but. Uh, here in, in Metro Vancouver, there was a bit of a shift. The Conservatives looks like there's a couple of you know seats still to be determined, but looks like the Conservatives are going to lose a few seats to both the Liberals and the NDP in Metro Vancouver. Um, what happened there? Well, I think there's a few factors for the you know for the Conservatives. I think uh, um, you know first of all, like at 17 seats that they held going in, that was a pretty good result for them in 2019. So I think this was one of the locations in in the country where they were probably a little bit more on the defensive as opposed to the offensive. Um, so losing a, losing a couple seats may not have been a big big surprise. I think they they'll be disappointed with the result that uh, looks to be they may have lost four seats here that they uh, they held previously. Uh, they'll be disappointed in that. Uh, I think they um, they came out on the wrong side on some of those three way races that we knew were that were we knew were going to happen in the lower mainland. Um, and the Liberals came in came out on the right side on on a couple of those. I'd also say the the People's Party may have you know there'll be lots of analysis and sort of digging in the entrails of this election campaign. But it, you know I look at a couple of ridings like um, you know I think it's. Uh, Cloverdale, Langley City, and and potentially Richmond Center, where those were tight, uh, you know, close losses by the Conservative candidate, and uh, and the PPC, you know, when you look at their numbers, they they may have hurt, uh, they may have hurt the Conservative candidate. You know, in that Cloverdale seat, they pulled 2,500 votes, and the Conservative candidate lost that seat by around a thousand. So you start to look at that and say to yourself, um, you know, what if? The other thing that happened, of course, was the the green vote collapsed nationally and and somewhat here in BC. Where where do you think that vote ended up going? Uh, who did it benefit? 
Yeah, the Greens, well, and we talked about this. They didn't, yeah. you know, it, it'll be kind of a mixed bag for them, I okay. guess. They'll be very happy about a win in, in Kitchener uh, Centre. And I think that uh, in Ontario is, a you know, an important sort of uh, area for them to try to grow from. But overall, yeah, it was a disappointing night. Their leader, obviously, a, a, a bad, bad defeat. You know, the Green vote, um, it, 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 there's no one sort of consistent beneficiary in my, in sort of my take looking at things last night. When, when I was looking at the early returns in Atlantic Canada, uh, where the Greens polled quite well in a number of provinces there, uh, you know, double digit uh, polling, um, you know, in 2019 and now had dropped below 5% in, in many ridings, it looked like that vote actually split between Liberals and Conservatives. Uh, and so you saw both parties picking up support in uh, in Atlantic Canada. In Ontario, it looks like the green vote collapse in Ontario largely benefited the Liberals. Um, you know, it looks like that that's what sort of uh, kept their vote up. In some areas, you could see a bit of that vote going to the NDP. Um, and then in British Columbia, I think it was really regionalized where um, I think on the island that that green vote collapse really supported uh, the NDP candidates. Uh, but in the lower mainland and in Vancouver, um, you know, metro itself, it's not quite clear in terms of who that, you know, may have been the beneficiary. I'd say Liberals and the and the NDP probably uh, benefited a little bit from that collapse. And again, leaving the Conservatives a little bit of the odd party out in terms of those three way three way races. Um, and, and, you know, we see that reflected in the seat count. Um, obviously, lots to dissect and cut through, and there'll be lots of, uh, you know, lots of things, lots of uh, reports down the road to try to help us understand a little bit of that uh, that collapse. But it is, you know, they'll be looking at this, going, uh, you know, we've got we've got some work to do uh, to really regain re regain our uh, standing with Canadians. Right. So this was much talked about in the final weeks of the campaign that it became quite divisive, um, and and there's a lot of talk of. Uh, voting for this or against that in the end though in bc where you have 42 ridings we're going to have fewer than 10 new faces so there really wasn't any great upheaval to throw the incumbents out did that did that surprise you at all well you know no i i, I guess I guess when we were looking at the national numbers and even looking at the regional numbers, uh, you know, we talked about it in a couple of our uh, conversations previously, uh, Harold, that that you know, par Parliament wouldn't look that much different. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think um, you know, it's as you know, Prime Minister Trudeau said at the outset, you know, it was we needed an election because it was dysfunctional and toxic. Well, I'm not sure we're we're any more functional or less toxic now, but. But that said, they've got to figure out a way to work together. No one's going to go back to the polls, uh, you know, in any short order. Um, I think the, um, I think it's interesting that what potentially you saw sort of happen is that a, a, a post-pandemic election, <clears throat> election at the beginning, where people were looking potentially at, 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 at an opportunity for change, and we saw some movement with the NDP and the Conservatives making up some ground uh, in different parts of the country. I think events you know, as we got to the end of the election, particularly with the fourth wave of the pandemic starting to rear its head, suddenly it became a bit more of a pandemic election mm -hmm. and stability started to weigh in more heavily. And I think ultimately, I think a lot of voters took a look at at uh, the Liberals and even potentially some of their incumbent candidates in their ridings and said, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's less risky uh, to, to stay with what we've got. Uh, including the current government, the current prime minister, then to make a change, and we saw, we saw things start to just gravitate to a lot of incumbents, um, you know, and and ultimately a result very similar to what we ended up, uh, what we started with uh, before this election was called. So we still have three or four ridings in BC that are too close to call here the morning after, and we're going to have and, to wait. And one here in Manitoba as well. So okay. we're, all, <laughs> we're all waiting for these mail-in ballots. Waiting for the mail-in ballots. Now, Leger did do some polling as far as who people voted for um, in the mail-in ballots. Is there anything there that, that points to what we might see in some of these ridings? Well, there's a little bit, you know, and it's interesting, you know, Harold, we worked together in in that BC election yes. and we saw a real clear trend of, of NDP supporters were almost by a two to one margin more inclined to vote by mail than the uh, than the other parties, the Liberals and the Conservatives. And obviously we saw that reflect as 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 those mail ins came in uh, three or four days later um, and we knew things were not going to change dramatically. Um, 
the uh, uh, in this election, there's a bit of a trend. The NDP were a little bit more likely to vote by mail. NDP voters, younger voters, 18, you know, under the age of 55, were a little bit more likely to vote by mail than older voters, which which would favor a little bit the NDP and and potentially the Liberals, but but not so much the Liberals. Uh, the Liberals and Conservatives were pretty were very similar in terms of what we found in our research. So we might, in fact, in some of those close ridings where potentially the NDP are either trailing by just a small margin or just ahead by a small margin, we may see those uh, NDP uh, numbers go up a bit. So, so, so keep an eye on those. The like NDP. Nanaimo Ladysmith, for example. For example, you know, that might be one that, uh, you know, that might creep up a little bit in, in that, uh, uh, you know, for the NDP column. Um, it's not as clear, certainly, than than what we saw at the provincial level, but that would be what I might, uh, you know, keep an eye on, uh, you know, as those re as those counts uh, start to come in. I suspect later today we might see some movement on those numbers, according to Election Canada. Whereas you've got a, a liberal Tory fight in Richmond as well, so that one is a little more difficult to call. Based on <clears> that, that one might be, uh, you know, that one would be a little closer. We have one here in Manitoba, uh, you know, one of our suburban ridings in Winnipeg is another very, very tight race between the Conservative and the Liberal. And, you know, we were looking at those numbers to try to determine what would happen. And, and it, you know, by our polling, it shouldn't change too, too much, but... You know they're they're close so right we'll and of course we know we had significantly more mail-in ballots in bc than any other province so exactly. i haven't actually looked at those individual ridings but yes it should be very interesting and who knows we could be into a recount depending on how close some of these end yeah. up being uh yeah, could be absolutely. two days before we know um, absolutely. all right andrew hey enjoy talking to you throughout the campaign yeah. appreciate all the time you gave us uh Thank you, and we'll we'll do it all again next election. <laughs> <laughs> That's hopefully it's a couple years. Not that I don't like spending time talking to you, Harold, but hopefully it's a couple years. All Take right. care. I've enjoyed it too. I've enjoyed the uh, enjoyed your questions and the uh, in the conversation. Thank you.